Hello everybody, my name is Vandrew the Gamer, and today I'm going to be going over a Semper 5 from Call of Duty World at War. Now recently I just finished the entire campaign, so I'm going to be doing every mission, it's going to get its own little video. So today we're going to be talking about Semper 5, I'm going to be giving you an honest review about the mission and a good recap. So Semper 5 is started on August 17th, 1942. It takes place in Macon Atoll in the South Pacific. It starts with the player in the role as Miller. A prisoner of war being interrogated by Japanese Imperial forces, while in the background, Carlson's raiders created a plan to rescue Miller and deal a devastating blow to Japanese forces on the island. So, one two combo in a sense. After we are freed, we are given a choice of either sticking with an M1 Grand or a Type 100, or even taking a Ristica from a dropped enemy and making our way to the beach. And after we choose a weapon, we have to help the Allied forces secure the beach village. We can use this in one of two ways. We can either go alongside the beach and take out hostile enemies, or we can go through the docks and use cover and take out Japanese forces at the same time. Now be prepared, the beach is more straight, but in my opinion, there were a little more enemies and not as much cover. While in the dock, there was more cover, but there was also a lot more enemies, and there was a lot more pressure. Now what I like about this mission is that it also introduced us, the player, to what's called bonsai charges. Now bonsai charges were when Japanese soldiers would charge the enemy, usually would be yelling bonsai and try and stab you. Now the best way to take care of these enemies are just shooting them, but if you do get unfortunate enough to get pinned, you can do a quick time event by pressing melee and if you're quick enough, if you do it with at the right moment, you're gonna push the blade back and survive. But if you don't, then unfortunately you're going to get a very quick game over screen. Fun fact, there's actually a really interesting achievement in this mission that pays homage to one of the world's most famous, and I mean famous, and quite loved war movies called Saving Private Ryan. Once you take point and cross a hut that appears to be on fire due to the explosions, Private Ryan gets attacked with a bonsai charger who appears to be on fire. Now, there are two ways this can play out. If you're quick enough, you can actually shoot the charger so he doesn't burn right and kills him. Or, you can unfortunately not be quick enough and the charger will burn him. Now, if you are quick enough, you will get the achievement saved Private Ryan. After we move through the huts, our team encounters an enemy machine gun emplacement in a wooden hut that is overlooking the beach and preventing access to the jungle. The emplacement can't be taken out if the player shoots the gunner, either through the wood or the curtain. Once we clear the village, we proceed through the jungle where we encounter a shrine. A soldier of ours moves in closer to investigate the shrine where they discover it was booby trapped and ambush occurs. Once we go through the jungle, we then encounter a river where enemies are spotted and start firing upon our second squad. Our newfound objective is to take out the enemy tower and their enemy forces to support the second squad as they proceed to land. After taking care of the forces and regrouping with second squad, the team proceeds to go to the jungle where they encounter a large amount of dead bodies, or appears to be dead bodies. While the squad tries to figure out what happened if another squad came through, a flare pops off all of a sudden and the bodies get up again and we appear to be ambushed. Fortunately we survived the ambush and move closer to our objective where we encounter a second machine gunner. Unfortunately this time we have very little cover to offer, but Miller is able to take out the machine gunner where he sees a second smaller outpost. Once the gunner has been dealt with, we then create a bomb with an empty truck by stabbing an oil drum and driving it to the gate, causing it to explode. While it explodes, we then charge into the enemy outpost and take on their enemy forces. In the meantime, we reach an ammo cache and plant charges to further disrupt the enemy war machines. Once we plant the charges, we follow Sullivan and the others and retreat to the extraction rafts when all of a sudden we are attacked with a Japanese soldier on Fukutana. Sullivan fortunately does come to the rescue and puts down the Japanese soldier, clean to the head. After Sullivan saves us, we are then put on a raft and leave. While we leave, we see the explosions unfold while we escape the island, and this deals a massive blow against the Japanese resistance. Now let's get into my review. Me personally, I really enjoyed this mission. From start to finish, it introduced war in a whole new light. 
Yes, the graphics are a little dated, but it aged like a fine wine. There was many twists that kept me on my toes, such as the ambushes and the charges. It also introduced a badass team of marines who I couldn't wait to play more with. I love the background. I love the environment from the sandy beaches and the huts to the jungles where we had to be extra careful from ambushes and traps. Another thing I liked about it was it introduced graphics. It introduced it was gory. It was intense. It was it was a really a great Call of Duty. I wanted to say thank you to everyone who stood by me and watched this video. If you would like to see the entire mission, please feel free to go to the playlist and click on the video. I have it posted, no commentary, nothing, and it's a basic walkthrough slash gameplay video. I hope you all enjoy it. If you like the video, please subscribe and give it a like. Comment, let me know what else I can do for y'all. Stay sharp. Stay